Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's Juan Pablo. Just here checking in with you guys. I'm from 100% Finance at 100%Finance.com. Just checking in with you great people out there on YouTube who are following my channel, or you just happen to stumble upon, stumble upon me through your searches, your search engine through YouTube. But either way it goes, I appreciate you guys checking in and watching this video. All right. Uh, to give you a little bit of information about myself, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, I do it full time, and uh, that's all you need to know. <laughs> all right, so let's get into this. I just want to talk about uh, how wealthy people think in contrast to poor slash middle class people. And yes, I grouped them together, poor slash middle class. So I'm going to tell you a little, a little of the mindset of how wealthy people think. All right, first, let's define wealthy. And this is just my definition. This is a big, actually, I'm not even going to give you a, a, a definition. I'm going to give you like an equation, a formula of what wealthy means, in my opinion, okay? So wealthy, in my opinion, is defined as, uh, I guess I can, I guess on the fly, create an ac ac acronym for it, uh, maybe PILE, P-I-L-E. So basically, uh, P-I is greater than L-E, PILE, okay? If you want to take a look, so wealthy, in my, my definition, is uh, it's defined as a person in which their passive income exceeds their living expenses. Simply put, passive income is defined as income that you receive on a consistent basis with little to no work required. Again, I'm a real estate investor, so having a lot of rental properties affords me a lot of passive income in which there is little to no work required on my behalf because I don't fix my own toilets I don't show up for court when a tenant doesn't pay I outsource these activities okay so it's little to no work required on my behalf my main focus is to make sure I'm working on the business and not in the business so that is passive income for me alright and you want to make sure the income that you receive passively from your investments, whether it's real estate, royalties, dividends, um, intellectual property, things of that nature. Uh, you want to make sure it exceeds your living expenses. You want to make sure it exceeds your bills. Why? Well, your bills come in on a consistent basis every month, right? Every month you get that electric bill. Every month you might get, you know, a mortgage or you have to pay your, your rent every month. And, uh, car no, gas, student loans, all these other bills. They come in monthly on a consistent basis, right? <laughs> well, pretty much little to no work required on their part, right? And isn't it smart that if you have bills that come in on a consistent basis, that you should have income that come in on a consistent basis without it requiring your time? That's the kicker. Because everyone says, yeah. It's smart to have income come in on a consistent basis, but I have to do it with earned income. No, do it with passive income. Okay? So I'm going to tell you how well, the people think differently in regard to getting this passive income. Right? So I just basically gave an illustration here. Um, what poor and middle class people do, they trade their hours for dollars. You know, they get paid by their time, through wages, through salaries, by the hour, right? They trade their hours for dollars so they can buy the toys they want. That's just my little rendition of a uh, joystick or, <laughs> that, you know, you play video games with. Basically, it's toys, things that people want out of life. Even like you can consider your house, it's liabilities. That's what that represents. A liability, a doodad, according to the rich dad principles. It's something that doesn't put money in your pocket, but actually takes money out your pocket. And that's what most middle class and poor people do in regard to uh, buying the things they want in their life. Because that's what it's all about, right? You want to be happy, right? You want to have the best things in life, or you want to have the simple things in life that, that make you feel good about yourself. It doesn't have to be an expensive car, but having certain things, it makes you feel good about yourself, right? And so... What people do is they trade their, this is earned income, right? They trade their hours for dollars to get the toys they want out of life. So they say, I want more toys. I want more. You know what they do? They say, all right, I'm going to work more hours. 
But does that really make sense? I'm going to work more hours to get more money so I can get more toys. But don't you know that your time is finite? It's not unlimited. There's only so many hours in a day. Right? So that, that business model in regards to getting more toys that you want in life or an upgrade on toys, you know, to upgrade maybe from, uh, you know, a, a bike to a car or like a Honda Civic to a, a Bentley, uh, so to speak, you think, oh, I need to work more hours than my job. By you working more hours at your job, you're also subtracting hours from other important areas of your life, right? There's more to life than just finances. We can all agree upon that, right? There's more to life than working. You want to have what we call total life prosperity, where you have wholeness in every arena of life, not just finances, spiritual, physical, you want to work out, relational, if that's a word, <laughs> you want to spend time with your relationships, you know, culture, and captivate those relationships with your friends and family. Right? You also want to have some, some, some uh, relaxation time, vacation time, having some fun, check out a ball game, or go to some spa, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You want to have like peace and wholeness in all these different areas. Right? But if you increase your time at work, you're subtracted from those other areas. You feel me? So that's to me is not a good good idea. Another thing what people do is not just you know increase their hours at their job, but they also get a part-time job. Which is still the same thing. You're still increasing your hours. But not only do they do that, guess what else they do? Yes, you guessed it. They think that, oh you know what, I need to get a better job. That's it. I get a better job with more pay. That can work. You can get, you know, you can increase your human capital, and to me, that's what a lot of middle class people do. They, uh, they do believe in buying an asset. However, however, they invest their money in an asset called human capital. I'm gonna improve my mind. I'm gonna learn a new skill. Nothing's wrong with that. Don't get me wrong here. I'm all about development. You know, personal development is key. But most people just think about developing their. Uh, their, their academics, you know, developing their, uh, their earning capacity through going back to school, getting a higher degree. Nothing's wrong with that. I'm all for progression. That's, that's a bar chart, line chart, by the way. It's going up. I'm all about progression. But the thing that's kind of wrong about that is you're still going to be trading your hours for dollars. But if you choose to follow that model, trading your hours for dollars for nicer toys, just make sure you're trading your hours for dollars at something that you enjoy doing. Okay? Because I'm all about a person fulfilling their purpose in life. Because I believe when you find your purpose and you're fulfilling it, you feel so much more happier than you will be not fulfilling your purpose or not even being aware of what your purpose is. You will have great satisfaction, that inner satisfaction, to be making a dollar in the way that you want to make that dollar. All right, and if that does mean working for someone else, you know, earn income, then by all means, I am for it. As long as it floats your boat, as long as it puts a smile on your face from ear to ear, that's what matters, okay? But you're still gonna be in that area where you're trading your hours for dollars. So let's say something happens, you know, knock on wood. Well, this is not wood, I don't know what that is. But knock on wood, let's say something terrible happens and you're not able to trade your hours for dollars. What happens to your income? It goes down. It goes down, down. What happens to your toys if you're not making any income? It goes down, down. So you can't really play as much, right? Of course, you might be that smart person who does have savings, who does have, um, you know, a retirement account you could rely on. But after a while, that nest egg or huge savings or that money stashed in a mattress for a rainy day, it'll become depleted over time. Right? So hopefully you're not in that situation where your nest egg, your savings, your reserves do not outlast your lack of time. Okay? So that's what most people do. They think that uh, I'll increase my hours or I'll increase my my earned income through increasing my human capital. 
okay? Or I learn a new skill, I go to school, I'll do this, I'll do that. I'll shop around from job to job, getting a higher raise. But it still doesn't answer the problem that you're still trading your hours for dollars, okay? So what you want to have is a backup plan where you're not necessarily trading your hours for dollars. So that, of course, like I said before, you have those bills that come in the LE, right? Your living expenses. You have those bills that come in monthly on a consistent basis. So you want to make sure you have passive income that comes in on a consistent basis. So just in case your hours dwindle away, you still got money coming in to pay this. So what you need is this. You need that PI. You need that PI, shout it, that passive income, folk. All right. So, so this is one of the things I've done, right? When I wanted to escape the rat race, as they call, as they quote it. What I've done is, okay, I said, all right, I'm still working my, my hours at a job, you know, a decent paying job with the government, safe and secure, right? Constant increases in raises every year, cost of living increase, consistent, great increase, consistent. All they gotta do is just show up. And I was a supervisor, so I could just delegate, delegate, delegate. Kick my feet up, relax in my chair. Hey, John, do this for me. Hey, Albert, do that. Simple, right? But this is what I've done. Because I wanted time. That's your most valuable resources, right? Most people think, oh, my your most valuable resources are, are time and money, right? However, if your most valuable resource is money, money can always be replaced. Time can. So time is your most valuable resource, right? And employers know this because they're willing to pay you money for your hours. So why would you do the same thing? Why can't you get that realization how important your time is and that you shouldn't use your time trading for dollars every month? But use your time to improve your financial situation by buying some income producing assets which we're about to go into. So back to what I was saying. I was working at a day job, so I was trading my hours for dollars, but what I was doing is I was using my dollars to buy income producing assets, hence this house or an apartment building. It doesn't have to be real estate, that just happened to be my vehicle of choice, okay? That's just something I had an affinity for. I just used to love going on dates, like when we would just go to see open houses, right? When I was younger, I'm talking about like as a, I guess, 18, 19 year old, 20 year old, whatever, I would act like I'm about to go buy a house, like me and my date or girlfriend, whoever I was with, and we would just pretend like we were gonna buy this house. Even though we were like young, no facial hair, like a baby, wet behind the ears, but I just enjoyed that. Or just going to open houses. Even though I had no money, even though I didn't have any credit or knew anything about uh, creative financing or doing real estate or any, know anything about this. I just enjoyed houses, right? So um, that's, I decided to make that my vehicle of choice. You, that doesn't have to be your vehicle of choice, all right? You can still get to the point of having your passive income exceed your living expenses by choosing a different vehicle, okay? It could be a business, as long as it's passive, as long as you have systems set up in place that it does not need your time. Again, you just work on it to grow the business and not work in it. All right, so that's what I began to do. Slowly but surely, you know, I would use my dollars that I got from my day job to buy a house. So of course, using your savings can take a long time, right? How long will it take you to save? Let's say you're buying a hundred thousand dollar house to make the math easy. You have to put a twenty percent down payment plus closing costs. So maybe twenty-five thousand dollars you got to bring to the table at closing to buy this income-producing asset. How long will that take you? When I quit my job, I was making $86,000 a year, but it took months to raise that capital, $25,000 down payment. I'm like, this is too slow. I want to quit my day job now. I want my time now. I don't want to wait months on months on months on months on months to save up to buy one little house at a time. So I began to think creatively to jumpstart my real estate investing career. And what did I use? 
OPM baby, other people's money. I start dabbling into the into doing my researching and networking. Found out about business credit. Found out about using hard money. Found out about using private money through lenders or partners. Found out about other creative ways to financing apartment buildings and distressed single family homes so that I can increase my passive income, PI, at a much greater pace. Okay? So now, I made it. Yeah, 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 we made it. <laughs> you know the songs go like that. I just had to, had to throw it in there. But um, I made it. I made it. Give myself a round of applause. Um, by my 30th birthday. I was a little late, but I did set a goal to achieve financial freedom by my 30th birthday, and I was six months behind the eight ball. But guess what? I still made it. Still made it. All right, so, uh, so what I do now is, and this is how we're actually getting to the conclusion pretty much of how wealthy people think. Wealthy people do this. They buy income-producing assets. So this is like not just one house, this is like a huge apartment building. So just imagine a lot of these, right? A whole bunch of them. So you get a lot of passive income coming in. So now this is passive. This is not earned like up here. This is passive right here. But it's still capital, it's still money coming in on a consistent basis with little to no work required. So now I use the income from my assets to buy the toys I want. The income from my assets afford my lifestyle. What time did I wake up today? Well, today's an exception. I actually woke up pretty darn early. I don't, have, I don't even know why. I woke up at 6.30. But normally, I think yesterday I woke up at 9 o'clock. I have no alarm clock. I refuse to set an alarm clock. I don't need one. I wake up whenever I feel like it. And you know what? I'm getting to the point now where I'm outsourcing, uh, going to the mailbox to check my rent. I'm paying someone now to check my rents and put them in the uh, uh, deposit them to my bank account. You know, some of my tenants deposit themselves. Sometimes, you know, older elderly people they tend to mail the check out, and uh, I have someone now who just deposits it for me. So, I'm, and even the tenant calls, I'm starting to outsource that to the same person, so that I don't have to be uh, expending my time doing that task, right? So I can make real estate invest investing as passive as possible. And I just check in every once in a while, doo -doo, making sure everything's all right. All right, good. Everything's uh, hunky dory. All right. So this is where you want to be, right? Because like, if you want more toys, a rich person thinks, all right, I got to get more assets. Like if you want a Jag, for example, you'll say, you know what? I want a Jag. Hmm. I'm, you know what? I'm thinking about financing it too. How much? Will my car note be if I finance a Jag? Hmm. Oh, it'll be six hundred dollars a month. So just say this is a new car. Uh, yes, this is on the fly, so it's not going to be nice. Yeah, it looks like a beat up Jag, but whatever. Vroom, there's a cloud of smoke. All right, so let's say this is your new Jag, right? And it's going to cost $600 a month. What a... What kind of zero is that? Alright, $600 a month. That's your car note, right? So, what wealthy people do, they say, okay. I know that this liability, this is a toy. That's why I put it on this side. Because it's taking money out your pocket. It's for personal use. Even though some people might buy that with a business just for the, the write-offs and the deductions. But that's another story. It's $600 a month. So a wealthy person will say, all right, what asset can I put in my portfolio that will pay me $600 a month to buy, I mean, to afford this car? So they had a new, a new asset. A new asset might be, all right, I'm going to buy a six-unit apartment building. These are apartments. So they buy a six unit apartment building using OPM, which is creative financing, other people's money. They, they use OPM because they don't use their own money because that's one of the beliefs I have. Use your own money 
to have fun with. Use someone else's money to get wealthy, to get rich. Right? All right, so that's what you do. And of course, if you're using other people's money, those other people are getting paid as well. You can use other people's money from these people who are training their hours for dollars, who got a high paying job, you know, working at some big company. They're making a lot of money, but they don't have the time to spend it, <laughs> right? Because they work like 80 hours a week. But hey, they got the time to at least listen to your business plan, your proposal, you know, your credibility packet, if you're trying to raise private money. He said, all right, I'll lend you my money at an interest rate. Or you know what, I'll partner with you, but you do all the work. Okay? So you are spending some time. But the thing on this side, the only time you're spending or your only hours you're spending is just for the upfront hours. It's kind of like Nike. You're just doing it, but just once. Like me, for example, I spend time finding an asset, analyzing it, finding the money, doing the due diligence, all that good stuff, managing it, or I outsource property management, whatever the case may be. But I spend the time upfront, and then when I acquire it, it's passive. So you use OPM to get you this apartment building, which generates $600 a month in passive income, which you use to pay for your car note. And then guess what? If you had just say a, uh, a three year car note on this Jag, guess what happens in three years? You no longer have a $600 payment, right? So this is wiped away in three years. It's now zero. And guess what? You have a Jag that's paid in full. And guess what? You still got this apartment building dishing out $600 a month. And guess what? It's probably going to be more than $600 a month in three years because you do rent increases. When a tenant moves out, you make the apartment just a little bit better, a little bit nicer. You increase the rent a little bit more. Every time the lease uh, renews, you give a little bit more increase. So you increase the $600 and you're also paying down the debt for the apartment building. You're managing it better. So now you got $600 coming in. You still got that jack. And you say, you know what? I'm using $600 to buy another new toy. This new toy is going to be taking a vacation. It's supposed to be an umbrella. You know how like you're in a beach chair. Don't ask me what that is. But you know how you're in a beach chair on a beach. This is the beach. Now you use that six hundred dollars and say, you know what? I'm gonna take a vacation every month. I'm gonna spend six hundred dollars a month just on vacations. That's how wealthy people think. That's how wealthy people think about money. So that's what you want to aim for. Get that passive income so it exceeds your living expenses. No, I should say. I was about to say, stop trading your hours for dollars so you can buy toys, but start using your hours and other people's money using creative financing to buy income producing assets. And if you need some training in real estate or coaching, holla at your boy. As you can tell, I'm a young looking guy, but I got it together in regard to this business model. Cause I like to enjoy my time working out, you know, playing basketball, you know, going on vacation. Even I take like small vacations, but it's still fun. I was in Chatt Chattanooga last weekend. I'm considering going to Miami uh, the third week of, of this month. And I'm also going to Savannah for St. Patrick's Day. I'll also be in New York and Pittsburgh uh, uh, maybe a month and a half from now. But you see, I still do these little local trips. Fun stuff. You know, you get to work out, get to learn new skills. Like if you want to learn an instrument, learn a new language. I can do all that stuff. So I can improve my personal development. It's very difficult for you to improve your personal development when you have a 40 hour work week at a job you don't like. That's that stuff I don't like. And neither should you. So spend your time getting passive income. So you might be saying, hold up Juan Pablo, I don't have the time. I have a 40 hour uh, a week job or even more, 60 hours because I'm still answering emails even though I'm off the clock. And it gets to my nerves, especially when these emails are negative, especially when these emails are long as heck. And you got to answer it by Monday before you go into work or the next day. Sucks, right? It sucks. So you're saying, oh, that's just the work. That's just one aspect. I work way more than 40 hours a week. The second part is I'm a family man 
or I'm a mother, whatever the case may be, I have a family to attend to, or I have uh, you know things to do with you know with church or whatever. I have all these other responsibilities. I don't have the time. But guess what? You do have the time. People make time for what they find is important. If you want to find out what's a priority in someone's life, check their pocketbook and check their schedule. That's what's important to them. So if passive income or obtaining passive income is not important to you, I can check your calendar and I'll see nothing in there in that regard. Or check your, your checkbook and see where your money's going to. And I bet you it's going to this and not going to that. But guess what? You can make the time. You can make the time. My thing is, if you work 40 hours a week, devote at least one-tenth of that. Ten percent of your time towards getting income-producing assets. And at least 10 percent of your capital that you trade your, your hours for. Ten percent of those dollars to go towards obtaining passive income as well. And if you spend more time and more money and being more creative, you know, through OPM, creative financing, you get to that goal way much faster, way much quicker. And again, even if you don't have the time, you can find people like me, for example, who do have the time and will gladly invest your dollars for you. Make sure you get a nice return. All right, because I've done that with people, um, with some, some partners, and they just reached out to me. They wanted to leverage my time and my expertise and my know-how. I said, sure. I would love to. All right, so uh, that's just a, I hope you found this very beneficial, but this was just a basic overview of how wealthy people think and how you need to think. Because I'm a firm believer, and I say this repeatedly so I can drill it in your head, the mindset trumps the skill set. Make sure you get your mind right. All right, so your homework after watching this video is to spend minimum four hours a week Doing what you have to do with your time to get passive income, to get to obtain in your portfolio income producing assets. And if you need any coaching, holla at your boy. We have ebooks, stuff like that, and it's you know a good price. It's very reasonable. Make sure you spend at least 10% of your time doing that. These these things could include the activities, going to seminars, getting coaching, reading books in regard to you know, real estate investing or owning stocks that's paying a dividend or intellectual property, royalties, things of that nature. Stocks, bonds, read books, listen to podcasts, watch YouTube like you're doing now. Network with people. Find people in your industry and network with them, like realtors, for example, or um, uh, other wholesalers in your area or flippers network with these people that's all i did with my spare time because like i said before the difference i says my eyes closed the difference between a poor person and a rich person a person who once was poor but became rich person who used to be in this area but graduated to this area is what they do in their spare time when i was in new york city i spent the last six and a half years in new york city that's all i did with my spare time I had no life. I ain't had no life. Y'all, networking was the only thing in my life. I don't know what to say with that. But uh, that's basically what I did, which is network. And I just used my spare time doing those things that I mentioned, reading books, going to seminars, networking with people, audio books, all that good stuff. Now I'm financially free and independent. And I will say not just that your homework, not just devoting 10% of your time toward those activities, but start allocating at least 10% of your funds towards gaining those income producing assets. That could be, you know, using 10% of your money. Your credit might not be that well. You might need to uh, contact credit repair services, like we offer credit repair services at 100% finance. Or you might need um, business credit. Or you need to do some things for the, to obtain business credit, like pay fees or do this, which we offer those services as well. Or you might use that money to uh, pay down some debt. Or you might use that money to buy these books. Or to pay for the coaching. Or to network or go to the seminar. Or to even use that capital towards down payments. You owe it to yourself to be financially free. 
And if you're a family person, you're a family man, you owe it to your family to be financially free. So you can be there for your children. So you can be there for your wife. You owe it to them. You owe it to them to afford them a great lifestyle. So that having a lot of money and having a lot of time is not a dichotomy between the two. But you can have them both. An abundance of time and an abundance of money. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I'm done. Uh, I just had to get a lot off my chest and I just want to share that with you guys. But you are successful. You're prosperous. You know what? You already have these income producing assets. Just start taking some action, alright? God bless. Take care. Peace.